you're watching afl.com.au. It's great to have your company as we count down to the 2021 Brownlow Medal. Everything you need to know about footy's night of nights is right here in one place as we give you the lowdown on the Brownlow. We'll take an in-depth look at the main contenders, plus throw in a couple of Smokies as well. And here to help me are a couple of highly credentialed individuals. Richo, welcome to you. 140 career Brownlow votes and 28 times you managed to get the three votes. How did you manage that? Well, I could get a kick in my day, Nat. <laughs> uh, that's what that's reminding me of. You're looking lovely tonight. How good is it to be dressed up? I haven't I know. dressed up for a long time. It's nice to see you out of trackies, to be honest. It is. It's very <laughs> nice. Hey, I'm going to find uh, some votes for some Ford and backs later on. We don't get enough love, so I'm going to represent the Fords and backs later on, Nat. Looking forward to that. Brownie, also great to have you here out of your track suit. 57 career Brownlow votes in your career. I know you've been studying the Brownlow form, plus the doggies are in the grand final. What are the excitement levels like? Very excited. I'd love Brownlow Medal <laughs> Night and um, I'm a bit surprised Matthew got asked back to do this this year because we did it last year. Yep. Both of us got it in order, the trifecta, and unfortunately you didn't, big boy, but well done last year on your selections. Yeah, Thank but you. Nat got it 100% right. You yeah. didn't get it in the right order. Well, it's called a box trifecta for a reason, Matthew. You put all three of them in there and it doesn't matter who no, finishes well where. But uh, you got a lot of votes and you did a great job and we'll reminisce about your we 2008 will. later on. Thanks, Nat. All right, well, maybe we should take a trip down memory lane and see what happens happened last year. Yeah, I think Lockie Neal will win the Brownlow. Obviously, the Brisbane Lions, terrific year. 14 wins, I think he will win. I think he'd be well in front at the halfway mark. Travis spoke, I agree with you. I think a lot of people would love to see him win. Yeah, my one and two are the same as yours, but the only difference, Christian Petrarca coming in third for mine. A smoky, I'm thinking maybe Jack McRae. I think I've really liked uh, how he's played this season. So just call me Nostradamus. <laughs> uh, well done. <laughs> the pressure is on me now for this year, so I've got to get my tips right. Um, of course, last year, Lockie Neal, what a fantastic season he had. Polled 31 votes, won it by 10 votes in the end, which is a record-breaking margin, equal best margin in Brownlow history. But this year, it's not as clear-cut, is it? It's really, really tight. Could we see a three-way tie? Yeah, absolutely, Nat. I mean, last year, I think we all tipped Lockie Neal. It was yeah. a, he was going to win, wasn't he? Yeah. We just knew that but it could be like 2003 where we had the three winners uh, Buckley, Rusciuto and Adam Goods and I've, I've got a real vibe this year that it's going to be the same. Yeah I mean it was 22 votes apiece Bontempelli, Oliver and Wines they're the three really that we're talking about it's kind of hard to, to split hairs between between all of them Brownie. It is and uh, I've got about seven players finishing within a couple of votes of each other so you know it does a player get a one or a two when maybe they get a three so Clayton Oliver I've got voting in more games than anybody else so if he gets twos where I've got maybe Christian Petrarca in for twos or threes he might blow them away Clayton Oliver. Yeah he certainly might let's take a look at the top 11 from that tie that three-way tie back in 2000 and three and you look at the list of players there I mean Ben Cousins as well Wanganeen Shane Crawford all so tight there at the top yeah. you know the difference now we, we don't see players winning with that amount of votes now 21 yeah. 22 yeah, votes right. it's always the high 20s even up into the 30s now and it's normally those big guns we normally get it pretty right the guys that are going to be up the top but the votes are a lot higher these days. Do you think days? it was harder to get best on grounds back then because of tagging? You see all those players, mm. Buckley, Cousins, yep. Crawford, all got tagged. There's no tagging anymore. Maybe once every now and again, but the midfielders get a free reign. Yeah, I think you, you make a pretty good point, mate, Nathan. They're normally just running, you know, on each other now. It's not a hard tag, so I think that's why we see so many votes now. We've had a list of superstars on that. Uh, right. Fantastic Do you players. think we should go back to the countback system? Because it used to be that way, I think, in 1980, then it changed to we were allowed to have a Higher system, but it used to go on a count back to see who had got the most three votes. Should we go back to that? No, I don't think so. You'll I think like if it? you polled the same amount of votes, you deserve a Brownlow as well. All right, let's go to you, Brownie, now for the markets. Tell us what's happening. Well, here's the market, and Ollie Wines at the moment is the favourite. Three dollars. He started a big price. Clayton Oliver, three seventy-five. Since the finals have started, Marcus Bontempelli's actually gone out. He was three dollars fifty out to four. Jack Steele comes home. I've got him voting eleven of the last thirteen games of the AFL wow. season. Petrarca and Walsh are big prices. Walsh should be in it for a while, but I don't think he can win it. And then, if you like some players, it's some bigger odds. Darcy Parrish, Merritt at 67, all the 
away to Luke Parker, who votes very well. and doesn't have a lot of Sydney players who takes votes off him, but Jared Lyons will vote well also. And will there be a tie? I've got a couple of players tying this year, but that could be wrong. Yes, $4 at Sportsbet. No is $1.20, but it could be a three- or four-way tie. Now, this is the fluctuation so far this year. You'll see that Bontempelli gets into $1.91 in July, but have a look at where Ollie Wine started. So if in March, Port Adelaide supporters, if you backed Dolly Wines at 81, you are very, very excited. The other one to look at there is Jack Steele. Opened at 13 on the back of last year. Got out to 21 of June. That's when St Kilda started to win some games. Gets all the way into $7. And Clayton Oliver opened at 21 into 375 favouritism. So Ollie Wines, the big mover in that market. Let's take more of an in-depth look now at the top contenders. And Brandy, we'll start with Ollie Wines, the big mover. What have you loved about his season in 2021? Just his consistency for Ollie Wines. That's what I've loved. He gets 32.9 uh, possessions a game. That's yeah. enormous. And 38 possessions last week in a final is outstanding as well. But he has been their number one player. Travis Boak started the season, I think, as their number one midfielder and was very good. But he's just a big bull. So every time he gets the football, the umpires notice him. Jack McRae gets just as much footy as Ollie Wines, but because he's smaller and you don't notice him as much, he's just a bull that umpires notice. And I thought this year he was their most consistent player in it every week. And Ollie Wines doesn't have a lot of players taking votes. I know they won a lot of games, but Charlie Dixon didn't have big games. Carl okay. Amon was okay. Boak will get a few votes, but there's not a lot of people at Port Adelaide taking votes off Ollie Wines. Yeah, no, very good point, Nathan. I think uh, when, when Port win, Wines is going to get the, a lot of three votes. Yeah. I don't think there's a competition there that there was probably last year. And big numbers too, yeah. not just 29s, 30s. I'm talking 36s, yeah. 37, 41s. Yeah. He's certainly been superb in 2021. The other one, of course, is Marcus Bontempelli. The MVP is voted by his peers, Richo, and he has been sublime. He's just had an unbelievable year, the skipper for the Western Bulldogs. I've got a man crush on Bont. I'm just going <laughs> to throw that. I'm going to throw that out there okay. straight away. He's the perfect man, Marcus Bontempelli, and he played some perfect games this year. There's no doubt. What I loved about him this year, Nat and Brownie, is that he kicked more goals. Yep. He kicked 26 goals for the season. Nathan and he was having games he wasn't getting the 35s and 40s but he was playing that forward half midfield role where he was getting 25 26 27 but he was kicking twos and threes and I reckon there were six or seven games there where he was clearly the best on ground and it was because of that scoreboard impact and there were games when it was tight late and he just took the game by the scruff of the neck and kicked a big goal when it was needed real captain's goals as we call them yeah, I think Marcus Bontempelli's going to poll a lot of threes, Nathan. The only two players in the last decade to have kicked more goals as a midfielder have been Gary Ablett and also Dustin Martin. Both won. of those won Brownlows in yeah. those years. No, good point. Yeah, and look, Bontempelli, I know, is the hot favourite, really, that everyone's sort of talking about. Clayton Oliver's the other one, the, one of the main contenders for mine. And, and when I look at his season, it's been so consistent. I guess the one concern is that the potential of Petrarca and, obviously, Max Gorn stealing votes from him but he's number one in the competition for contested possessions number two for clearances he's had a stellar season yeah that, that's the thing with Clayton Oliver Nathan and I, I know you'll agree his ground ball game he hunts the footy at ground level better than anyone Lib is probably close to him but I reckon the umpires noticed that. He's had every contest. And the difference with uh, Clayton Oliver this year is in previous years, he's been to get the footy and distribute it. This year, he's got the footy. He's been able to run with it. So he's ran 10 to 15 metres, then given it off. And he's also kicked a few goals this yeah. year as well. And obviously the wins for Melbourne, they stack up. So Clayton Oliver, look, I've got him in for a lot of ones and twos. Mm. If he turns them into threes, he could blow them away. And his ball use this year, his ball use inside 50 has just been outstanding. Yeah, it has. Now, in 2008, Richard, you came very close to winning a Brownlow oh, medal of your Are we going to talk own? about that again? <laughs> I know. Well, last this. year on this Don very now, show... <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing he's got. No, oh, no it is actually. <laughs> no, it's, it's all I've got these days now. <laughs> How many goals did you kick at the MCG? Remind us again. Uh, 464. Oh, OK, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> last year on this very show, we talked about how your date for the night in 2008 yes. stole all the votes off you in round 21. But if you had have won, you would have actually robbed us of one of the most memorable Brownlow speeches of all time. Let's take a look. Terrible rumour going around that you proposed to Haley and you didn't have, have a ring, you put a burger ring on her finger. Is well, that true or not? Yeah, that's, that's definitely true, but... <laughs> what were you thinking, man? Well, I wasn't going to make the mistake of buying her a ring that she didn't like, so... 
And I know she likes burger rings, so I thought I'd... <laughs> I thought I'd slip one of them. <laughs> and she's flat with me now. <laughs> Sorry. Who doesn't love a burger ring? He was no. a bit loose that night, wasn't he, Adam yeah. Cooney? Who doesn't love burger rings? You're right. I think they'd had their Mud, Mad Monday on that afternoon, and I think Kearns had had a couple before he arrived. Could you have topped that speech no. had you won? No, absolutely no chance. I just want to put it on record now. Adam Cooney thoroughly deserved that Brownlow medal. I got votes I shouldn't have gotten that year. Do you, do you oh, believe him? Oh, absolutely not. He's <laughs> dined out on this. Well, you wouldn't believe how much he's dined out on this. But uh, Adam Cooney, what a speech it was. It was yeah. great, uh, involving everybody. Everybody was in hysterics at the Brownlow, so well done. Now, Brownie, I know you have your own predictor, which you've been working very, very hard on. But let's take a look now at afl.com.au's Brownlow predictor. And it does have Clayton Oliver with 34 votes winning the Brownlow medal and then Marcus Bontepilli with 32. Yeah, the big surprise with that one, Nathan, is no there's Ollie no Wines. Ollie Wines there. I, know, yeah, that, I was shocked. I mean, they've got <laughs> Travis Boak, the AFL predictor, having uh, 24 votes. And that that is the big surprise there. The rest of them look pretty right. Jack Steele's going to get votes. but. Ollie Wines is a surprise there, Nathan. It is. Um, I can't believe he's not on there. I think he's been the best player all year. They're, obviously, they've voted Boak ahead of him. No, Took Miller. I know Took Miller's ineligible, but he'll get a lot of votes as well. Now, you've been talking up <laughs> your Brownlow predictor, Brownie, so I'm keen to see how it stacks up. Well, I thought I'd do this because I watch a lot of football, probably five games live a weekend, and then I watch the replay. So I thought, let's have a crack at it this year. And this is what I've come to. So I've got Marcus Bontempelli and Clayton Oliver um, even at the top. I've got wow. Ollie Wines, Jack Steele, 11 of the last 13 games. Now, the interesting part is, have a look at uh, Clayton Oliver from round 17 to 21. I've got him in for four, four ones and a two, where I've got Christian Petrarca in for three, two, three and three. If that flips around the other way, you can see how Clayton Oliver could win this Brownlow medal. Gee, Jack Steele comes home, doesn't he? 11 yeah. of the last 13, so you'd have to have a look at Jack Steele for the last eight rounds, yeah. Did you just say that you, you had to watch four or five games to do you? Well, you, you have to four watch Four or five games, games you, live, you I said, so the games I go the to, games. and oh. then I watch the replays, okay. obviously, no. Matthew. Yes. No, we've been working Cheeky. together all year, and I've been following Nathan's. You have put a lot of work mm. into it, mate. Let's hope it stacks up. It's out, for... it's out there now. <laughs> do you have time for anything else? when you're watching that much football? Um, well, it's lockdown, so yeah. what else? Lockdown, we're not doing much at the moment. <laughs> but uh, to be paid to watch football, it is a great job. No, it is. I want to talk about early bolters now. And if we think back to 2010, Chris Judd was that he missed the first three games of that season with suspension. And then he went bang because for his first five games of the season, he polled three votes in each of those games and then hung on to win his second Brownlow medal. Richo, who could be the early bolter this year, a la C. Judd. Yeah, I think it's a pretty obvious one, Nat. Obviously, Melbourne won the first nine games of the season and Christian Petrarca, I thought, came out of the block. So you, you sort of forget the start of the year sometimes when you work in the media. But thinking back now, we did talk about Christian Petrarca a lot in those first seven or eight games. Yep. He averaged 29 disposals a game and uh, one goal. But in some of those games, he was kicking multiple goals. So I think at around eight or nine, I think Christian Petrarca could potentially have the lead. And then obviously Clayton Oliver can come home for Melbourne. And Max Gorn's going to steal a few as well. Yeah. But early in the year, Oliver nearly averaging 30 and a goal a game. I think he'll be right there. And did you know, congratulations to Chris Judd as well. <coughs> it was International Good Looking Bald Man Week last week. Oh, and was some it? nominations were Vin Diesel, Jason <laughs> Statham, and, and can Judd. you believe Chris Judd got nominated for what? the International Good Looking Bald Man Award that's, last week? So good I'm not company. sure who won it, but yeah. there were some nominations. All right, we'll have to look up after this who actually won it. Brownie, let's get the early movers from you now. Well, let's have a look at the first five rounds. And Taylor Walker, you know, we started so well, Tex. $2.75 favourite. Clayton Oliver, I've got him in for a couple of threes in that early part. Dustin Martin started well. Max Gorn as well. Look at that. Mm. Three Melbourne players. And could this be the theme of the Brownlow where Melbourne players are taking votes off each other and David Mundy? Then you get out to a leader after round 10. And I believe Clayton Oliver should be leading after round 10. Hugh McCluggage will be right up there early. Marcus Bontempelli has a patch from round 9, 10 and 11 and 12 where I think he gets about three votes in four of the next five games. So for me, Clayton Oliver after round 10. I want to talk now about the late arrivals, those who rock up to the party a little bit late and they go really, really hard. Paddy Dangerfield is one that springs to mind back in 2016. He stormed home in the final eight rounds of the Brownlow Camp polling, 15 votes to finish on 35, nine clear 
of Luke Parker that year and what a terrific season that was from Paddy Dangerfield. Yeah, unbelievable year from Paddy Dangerfield. So if you have a look at it this year, who's going to do a Paddy mm. Dangerfield of that year? I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, the coaches' votes, had a quick look at them yesterday and I know you have a look at the coaches' votes at times, Nathan, for your Brownlow predictor. And in the last nine rounds of the season, I think it's Jack Steele. Yeah. I think he's going to be the one. And you had him coming third in your Brownlow predictor. In the last nine rounds, he polled coaches' votes in eight of those games. So I wouldn't be surprised if he comes home with about uh, 13, 14, 15 votes after round the last round nines. Yeah, I think I've got him in for 16 votes in the last eight rounds, 11 yeah. of the last 13 rounds, and it coincides with when St Kilda start winning games of football. Their first half of the season was pretty ordinary, but then when they start winning, and I think that run started against West Coast, and he gets some big numbers. And the other thing I reckon in, in recent years that I've noticed with the Brownlow medal is you used to have to win the game to get the three votes. Yeah. That's not the case anymore. If you get 35, 36 in a losing team, you can still get the three votes now. So, Brownie, who looks like they're going to have a really strong run home? Well, Jack Steele, obviously, let's have a look at that market. And he's pretty short in this market. Ollie Wines is obviously in there. Took Miller has a really good patch in the second half of the season. Um, Took Miller probably won't get too many votes up until round six or seven, but after that does a really good job. But Jack Steele, I can't see anybody beating Jack Steele in that last, out, that last eight rounds. And players over and under. This is my bet with mates. So bet with mates at Sportsbet. I've picked out a couple here who I think should get over. I think Zach Merritt gets over 22. It did start at 21 votes. Took Miller started at 22, so I think he can get over 23. And Sam Walsh over 25 votes. The only Carlton player who should vote or get threes. Out, outside Mackay, or McKay, whichever way you like yeah. it, he kicks seven goals one game. Isn't it a shame that Took Miller can't win? I know. Because he, he polled, uh, he had 30 possessions in 16 yeah. games in yeah. a row. Yeah. In a row. That's unbelievable. That's the record. He should have challenged at the tribunal. Probably would have got up the tribunal lotto. Uh, now, Richo, you've been working away in the background on something and... Obviously, you're flying the flag for the forwards and the backs. I know, it's disappointing, isn't it, that we don't see a big forward. You know, I would have loved to have seen Buddy Franklin win a Brownlow medal. Yep. He still might. We, you never know. He could come good next year. But we've ne we haven't seen a forward or a back win no, a Brownlow yep. medal for a long, long time. You've got to go back to 1987 when the great man, the only, there's only one Tony Lockett, won the Brownlow medal. The big plugger there, the full forward. Kicked over 120 goals Incredible. this year, plugger. Uh, he only had six votes after uh, the first 14 rounds and he came home with 14 votes after that. St Kilda only won nine games, so that was a good effort in itself. But look, a big plugger there. He was pretty pretty haircut. emotional on the night. He's got the mullet going. <laughs> he was a bit like you at the oh, moment, no. got the mullet. <laughs> I need a haircut. It's back in trend. <laughs> it is, it is. Bailey Smith, doesn't he rock a good mullet he at does. the moment? But what about the defenders? Because there's not many defenders out there who have won the Brownlow medal in recent years. You have Unsung to go heroes, aren't all they? the way back to Gavin Wanganeen. What back a player pocket. Gavin Wanganeen was. And he was just so noticeable when he played. Uh, look at him, a baby face Gavin Wanganeen there. Won that. Obviously, famously, Greg Williams had 44 possessions against Melbourne. Did not get a vote that day for his 44. He might have been back chatting the umpires, but Gavin Wanganeen, the last offender to win it. Brad Hardy won one in the back pocket as in well. In 85, yeah. yeah. 1985. So, Richo, you've taken a look at five three-point games or three-vote games by forwards and defenders this year. Take us through who you think is going to poll well. Yeah, so these are games where they, on the night, you have a look at these, they've got to get the three votes. Yep. Simply have to get them. And the first one we're going to look at is Sam Taylor's game on Tommy Hawkins in round 21, that was Nathan. Brilliant. He was simply, you couldn't get past him. He had 17 intercept possessions and actually flogged uh, Tommy Hawkins that night, which is pretty hard to do. If he doesn't get the three votes for 17 intercept possessions, um, there'll be something he wrong. He should get the three votes, Matt, but Tim Tarano has 34 oh. and kicked two. Lockie Whitfield has 34. Toby Green kicks four and has 19. Yeah. So you'd hope the umpires notice that he's beaten Tommy Hawkins. Probably the only time this year Tommy Hawkins has been taken to the cleaners. Yeah. Uh, marked the ball in front of him all night. But 34 and two goals to Taranto is a big game too. So you think the midfield will get him? Yeah. Well, it's just history says that midfielders yeah. will get it, but you'd hope Sam well, Taylor I'm, deserves well, to get I'm the three. Well, I'm saying he shouldn't get them. Now, the next one is Tom Stewart. <laughs> Everyone will remember this game. He broke the record for intercept marks in a game in this round, in round, in this uh, game in round 14. We know this is the game where Gary Rowan kicks the goal after the yes. siren to win. Tom Stewart simply 
was the best player on the ground that night. He has to get the three votes. He'll get so it. Who's he up against? You're He's up against him, Bont with 30, but they lost the game. Selwood had 29 and kicked one. OK, the next one. If you kick 10 goals in a game... He's got it. Big you've joke. You've got to get him. You have to Surely get him. Surely yeah. it would be a crime No, he Josh will. Bruce he gets get 10. He, get, he gets them here. He kicks 10 goals. I remember this game. It was a Sunday Arvo at Marble Stadium. And late in the game, he needed to kick a couple and it was probably past the 25-minute mark. The crowd was uh, cheering for it. Beveridge cleared everyone out. He kicked the 10 old school, goals. Wasn't it? it was old school. It was bare in the square stuff. He'll get the three <laughs> votes there, Josh Bruce. Uh, the next one is Jack Rewalt up at uh, Giant Stadium. This is the game, Nat, where he took that incredible mark. Oh, running back with the flight. So good. A hanger running back with the flight. But the thing about this game, he, he won it for them in the last quarter. Kicked really important goals. That mark that he took, he had 14 marks in the game. Kicked five goals. I'll be stunned if Jack Rewalt doesn't get three votes there. Talking about bear in the square many, many years ago, uh, the great Spud Frawley asked Matthew, I want you to be the bear in the square. I need you to get big, I need you to push players around. Uh, Matthew decided not to train and put on about 10 kilos, but it didn't quite work out for you, did it? Ah, oh, snap my hammy <laughs> off the bone. <laughs> Got too fat, Nat. Oh, dear. 110 kegs. Jeez. Mm, that's heavy. I like it. All right. <laughs> As we come to the end of our show, it's time to put all of our reputations on the line. I want your Brownlow tips, please. Richo, we start with you. Yeah, I, I think Ollie Wines is going to win this Brownlow medal. We know that Port Adelaide finished in the top two. They won, uh, won 16, 17 games for the season. So I just think Wines, and you, you mentioned it before, uh, I don't think Boke's going to take as many yep. votes off him this year. So I just think Ollie Wines will win. I've got Oliver finishing second and, and Bont finishing third there. And I know he can't win, but my smokiest took Miller to get the most yep. votes. Franny? Well, my very similar. The same three. Box trifecta. You could put these in. <laughs> and Marcus Bontempelli's in there. I've got him even with Clayton Oliver, then Ollie Wines. But the smoky is Christian Petrarca, the big bull. He can be noticeable by the umpires. I think he's had his career best this year. So Christian Petrarca, if he takes votes off that man, Clayton Oliver could be well up there. Big Max Gorn steal a few? Early. Early. Not as yeah. many late. Has a flat patch in the middle of the year where he just plays really good football. Yeah. But uh, it'll, it'll take some early. Who have you got, Nat? Similar thinking to you, Richo. Exactly the same. Ollie Wines winning the Brownlow for 2021. My smoky Sam, it was a toss up between Jack yeah. Steele and Sam Walsh for mine, but Sam Walsh at the higher odds. I thought I'd go with him. Probably not going to poll as well in the later part of the season. He had a but stretch there, didn't he, Sam he Walsh? Did. He certainly yeah. did. Well, that is a wrap on our Brownlow show for 2021. Brownie Richo, so great to have you in and out of your active wear. I know, I'm just going to leave this on all day, Nat. <laughs> well, you should. I'm go for a walk <laughs> in my suit. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.